In the next segment, we're going to get into how you can buy a Bitcoin, the exchanges that are getting set up, the apps that deal with with uh, Bitcoin trading. Uh, we just uh, we just heard that that part of sort of the reason Bitcoin is working the way it is is because people don't understand it. So on one hand, the question here is like, well, wait, it's a game, and only a few people understand it, and some are able to game it for their own advantage. The code is written. The rules are readable. They're reviewable by anyone, but hold on. Considering that there is nothing to back it up, there are no banks, no governments, no gold uh, reserves. If your Bitcoin uh, is stolen from your Bitcoin exchange or your Bitcoin wallet, you're not getting it back. You have to have a tangible good to back the currency. As you're pointing out, most money is already digital. You know, most money uh, that exists in our economy only exists on a computer. There's nothing backing it. That's why it's already out of control. There's been so much speculation all year about what is Bitcoin going to do next. This is a scheme. So speculation to me is driven by the larger banks right now. Bitcoin up to now 700. Some people in China jumped in. Well, who can afford that in Africa? And that's one of the main issues with Bitcoin. Uh, how do we think of the value? All over the world, people can't afford a $700 product. Per, per Bitcoin unit, per full unit. For a coin, you know, on a screen. But, I mean, I think that's the, 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 the thinking you hear from a lot of people. Do you know what goes on inside of the Fed? Mm. I don't know what goes on inside of the Fed. But is that a trusted system? Now, the Fed is also run by humans. And very vulnerable to hacking. So um, those are the kind of basic principles that have made Bitcoin work from the beginning. No, it's complicated from beginning to end. Then. I think that's... That's the, 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 the thinking you hear from a lot of people. Now, of course, the software uh, can be changed and, and the rules can be changed. It's like this entire mini economy now running on helping major companies get in on blockchain technology. Gathering up all the transactions that are coming in and keeping track of who has which Bitcoin. Bitcoin is backed by code. <laughs> We've never had a monetary system that was that transparent before. It's a system that exists with nobody in charge. It, it, a little bit. It's run by somebody that, that monitors rules in a far more faithful manner. I mean, you can divide a Bitcoin into as many parts as you want. It's, it's sort of like a money, sort of like an asset. Um, it's sort of like gold dollars and things like that. An incentive for people to join the network right now is the fact that right now it looks like a very good investment so and support the network. I believe there's something more to Bitcoin. What are we being told now? There's a massive wealth transfer that's occurring. A shitcoin revolution world that's cashless because all money is digital. That is, is, is to an advantage to, to all the world. That's correct. And when you look at the introduction of the timing of different cryptocurrencies. There is this movement in, of cryptocurrency. And then what we do, we say, okay, you want to buy this little Bitcoin, we're going to put in $100. So what is the pitch? What are they telling us that people are going to gain? Open source code. Everyone can read it. Tech literacy. Which anybody can read and audit. Now, most people aren't technologically savvy. But they do not know the technical, uh, or they're not technically savvy enough to really understand. It really um, becomes uh, a worthwhile system for that. You know, this whole idea about, you can read it. Did you try? The brain is hanging out there on the internet in a completely unencrypted, plain text form. I mean, it's a combination of the open source software code. Right in front. Working with the big Fortune 500 clients to help them identify where are their gaps in their current processes. So you could actually build this as a system you can trust where people said, hey, it's open source code. You can trust it. I understand that this cannot be modified, which anybody can read and audit. You can trust it. And therefore, I trust it. You can trust it. I can take that computer code, I can make some changes, I can convince my friends to run this different code, and we'll grasp the greatness that is at hand. Trust it. It's benefiting some few people. Yes, I understand the premise of this technology. But there, are, there is a core group of developers responsible for the um, Bitcoin, technologically speaking. And how they can be leveraged to update a whole host of different processes that are in place at existing businesses. JP Morgan's actually borrowed a bunch of the code from the Zcash network in order to build Quorum, which is their blockchain product. Yeah, the underlying blockchain infrastructure is 
So there's already class structure built in. We put the lower fees and some are more secure. The Rockefeller family protection. Like I said, they also include an activity tracker too. The seed. Babylon watch. Oh, this person down in this coin. This person, they already selling them out. Or predisposed to genetic risk. That are being looked at by various governments. So it could be either a government could play that role or it could be a private person. Design is being structured right now to commit a wider access to information. It's the decentralized nature of the information. So that the oppressive classes are not alone in their attempt to find fault in the IMF. We'll be able to take the data and have more information. Something that felt more transparent. To facilitate government processes. As we get more exposure to We can see it, so we trust this. And many more uh, other factors that we can assess. Bitcoin from my phone to your phone, that's going to show up on the blockchain. And every other person in the world can see it. It's a cryptocurrency. And one individual, one central party keeps a record and can always see what everybody does. But there isn't a huge difference between using cash for a transaction where you're purchasing coffee, where you're not actually disclosing who you are and where you've got enough money in order to exchange for that cup of coffee. But I, I think I see what you're getting at, that it's, it's the, the effort, the attempt, is to try to create a more robust system where literally every single transaction is granularly tracked. Because privacy matters. It matters to business, it matters to people, it matters to human dignity, and sure, it matters to criminals too. And that's why actually the advent of privacy protecting cryptocurrencies like Zcash has been very exciting for the banks as well. Let's examine the sick point. Because you can see Bitcoin's brain much more clearly than you can see the brain of the people at the very top. The rich who were funded by one of the Rockefeller Foundations. So that have additional features in place to mask the identity of personas. And a secure that network. It could be a judge, but could also be your friend. The Rockefeller family is people are hearing about it. And then that, because of that, you have sort of explosive increases. Or a potential new revenue generation opportunity where one did not exist before. They're going to be based on the greed. Like, Currencies get in where they fit in, and so there are some that are made for major financial institutions, the federal government, and the relationship between them, as well as Wall Street. There are other privacy-preserving blockchain networks that are in existence. The financial meltdown of our traditional financial ecosystem, there have been some parallels drawn between the two. It certainly has led directly to this. I, I think some of this may have come out at some point. This has been an issue. So there's certainly a lot happening behind the scenes. As far as the supply being fixed, well, there's 1,400 of these currencies that exist. So, once you get savvy to this cryptocurrency game, you look and you'll see that they're close to now 1,400 different current cryptos and, and tokens out there. Bitcoin can't have supply adjust to meet that demand. A good thing, then, that this is fixed? That it's a scarce currency? I mean, that's to some a feature, not a bug, because it means we don't have to worry about the monetary policy of the central issuer and widely accountable to more people. And they can be divided into any set of denominations. These new technologies are are very experimental. That allow you to convert crypto into fiat and so it's a magic show. So a middleman is not there. So the trick is you get everyone to maintain the cost. Create new benefit uh, in terms of a cost reduction. And all the world is going going to adapt. The first wave of adoption coin and cryptocurrency. So now people have to buy the products. Buy into and feel comfortable with they have to contribute and support the industry. That we didn't have a say. Some people are paying it because they know it's wrong and that they're serving a false god. This ever since the Great Recession, I do not trust Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies in that specific system. And the reason why. Besides, what's going to stop those with all the wealth from buying all the currency? I'm into the uh, cryptocurrency space. That means we don't have to worry about the monetary policy of the central issuer of the Bitmeister, an educational platform on financial technology and investment strategies. <sighs> There's a lot I still have to learn about Bitcoin. We'll keep studying in just a minute. Bye-bye <laughs> <laughs> you know. cryptocurrencies.